Hi, this is Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. This evening, I'd like to invite you to join me as I conduct another live telephone town hall meeting. Hope you'll take this opportunity to share your thoughts, ideas, and opinions. If you'd like to ask me a question or make a comment, you can press the zero key on your telephone at any time. Before we begin, allow me to make a few introductory remarks while people get on the line. There are many major issues on my constituents' minds these days, and I look forward to hearing from you on all of them. I'm keenly aware of the sheer energy in the political arena these days. With the inauguration of the new president, stark differences of opinion have come to the surface. People have used their First Amendment protections to speak out, demonstrate, and to protest. I endorse this engagement on the big issues of the day. What I regret is the apparent break time, the breakdown at times in civil discourse across the country. For example, last week the President said to Congress his preliminary budget outlined for the next fiscal year and a budget amendment for the current fiscal year, this is 2017, that boosts security spending, focusing on defense, national defense, and on his proposed border wall. Since then, the newspapers and websites have been filled with stories about the dire consequences of this aspect or that portion of the president's budget outline. Some of that might be or might not be true. But since then, I've been reminding everyone that the power of the purse continues to lie with Congress and our constitutional responsibilities as an equal branch of government. All budget decisions will go through the regular budget and appropriations process, both in the House and in the Senate. On our House Appropriations Committee, we will do due diligence, conduct hearings and oversight, and go line by line to ensure that taxpayers' dollars are invested wisely and effectively. Of course, we need to protect vital programs that people rely on, that promote economic growth and job creation, and to protect our nation. It's our duty to represent our districts and our states and our people at home. That's why we have a budget process so that voices can be heard on programs that are important to the American people. I also expect this evening we'll be talking about the health care reform proposal now before the House of Representatives. I'll say up front that while I'm concerned that the current law, Obamacare, is failing the Affordable Care Act, I'm not sold on the current version of the bill being debated. They went through three committees with one more to come this week. Speaker Ryan this weekend endorsed additional changes to the bill, and those changes are being made literally as we speak. So I'm anxious to see and study the, the provisions of the final legislation that is now expected to be before the House for a vote this Thursday. I've always appreciated the direct responses to today's issues offered by my callers and constituents during telephone town hall events. I conduct these telephone town halls because it enables me to get literally thousands of people together at one time and gives everyone on the line the opportunity to pass along a question or a concern to me. I'm here to listen to you as I crisscross my congressional district, the four counties that I represent these days. I found people very concerned about topics ranging from national security to the current health care proposal to high taxes and what's necessary to improve job opportunities for all Americans. I look forward to hearing your comments on any of the issues you might want to discuss this evening. Again, please don't hesitate to hit zero at any time to ask me a question or make a comment. Please visit my website at freelingheisen.house.gov. There you can sign up for my weekly e-newsletter and send me emails. I'm listening. Let's take the first call from uh, Jean in Caldwell. Thanks for getting on the line this evening. Jean in Caldwell. Hi. Uh, How are you? uh, I'm okay. I'm going to be a senior citizen in about five years, and I was wondering what's going to happen to Social Security. Well, there's, I think, bipartisan support for Social Security. Social Security is is a is a, a special bond and pact between 
uh, those who work and the United States government. And uh, I think Social Security will be protected by both Republicans and Democrats in, in this Congress and future Congresses. I, I think it's absolutely essential for many people. It may be the primary source of their income. But uh, I don't think there's been any attacks that I've heard of on Social Security. I think we have bipartisan support for making sure that it, that it always exists and it's always there for everybody. But, but th thanks for your comment. Question. Uh, Michael in Rockaway, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You've, you've joined my telephone town hall meeting. Hi, it's uh, Michael from Rockaway. Hi. How are you? Um, Very well, so thank you. I am extremely concerned and alarmed at all of the potential conflicts of interest and um, ties to Russia that the president has. And I was listening in on your call on February 28th. And in one sense, I was heartened um, by your comment that you thought that he should release his tax returns because I believe that if we got to look at them, um, we would you know, be able to examine some of those ties and find out whether uh, some of these conflicts exist, who he owes money to, et cetera. Um, but I was less heartened by the fact that you had not mentioned on that call that you had voted the very night before on February 27th to table Bill Pascal's resolution that would have forced uh, Donald Trump's tax returns to be released by the IRS um, to the Ways and Means Committee. Um, and, um, you know, I read your explanation in The Hill, um, which where you said it was political theater. And I don't know that I understand from um, political theater. Uh, no, I, I, it, sort of, I, I, it matters I, I, more how you vote than... Let, let me just let me just finish this yeah. this point because I, I have two asks of you yeah. um, based on this. Um, one is is that will you make a commitment the next time that this comes up for a vote that you will vote um, for a re resolution that will uh, call for uh, the tax returns to be released because he's not going to do it voluntarily and he's certainly not going to sign well, a bill. But this this this, I, uh, this I, I, method again of the needs to again. Make wait 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 yeah. wait. I am not finished. Again, I think you ought to release my second order releases taxes. Okay. I, I think you ought to release well, his taxes. And well, okay, when, okay. So and, first, so my first question is, and the, and the chair, so the person in the chair, the person in the chair. Uh, I, I, when the chair rules, and this is, I think, a tradition. The the majority party usually upholds the 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 uh, the, the, the chair's rules. Do I think he ought to release his taxes? I think he should. But th this is well, there's what, I mean, tried there's, and there's true. What you, but that's what you think, and there's how you, how you vote, and there are two, there are two separate Yeah, but the, the, this is the, this, my, is the par, this is the par, this is the parliamentary this is the parliamentary tactic, which was used when 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 the Democrats were in control to to to, to contest the decision of the of, of the chair. I, I I feel very comfortable by saying to you, and anyone else who's listening, that I think the president ought to release his tax returns as every president has done before him. But on the floor of the House, I support the ruling of the chair regardless of what the issue is, because often the, the ruling of the chair issue is a political device. And, and quite honestly, uh, I need to support the majority in terms of what the chair's ruling is. But appreciate your getting on the line again. Thank you. Uh, Tim and Morris Plains, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You've joined my Hi, health uh, program. Hi. Hi, I have a question about the budget, Trump's budget proposed. I know you're chair yeah. of the House Appropriations. I know it's going to be coming your way soon. So my question is, do you support the budget where it cuts funding for the for PBS, the NEA, and the I do not. heating assistance no, and the heating I, assistance program? No, I, I, I do not. As a matter of fact, I've, I've supported the National Edu uh, Endowment for the Arts. I've supported the National uh, Endowment for the Humanities. My heap is for low-income uh, people who need assistance. In the overall scheme of things, I, I think the, 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 the arts programs, which have been a target for, for many years in preceding Congresses, it, it's not a heck of a lot of money. And I, I enjoy, mm -hmm. the, enjoy those programs as much as every other American. I, I think it's money well spent, and it affects, may I add, 
every congressional district mm-hmm. some sort of an arts program that's given to children or open their eyes to to science. So I I am not part of the group that want to do away with uh, supporting uh, uh, the National Endowment for the Arts or Humanities, and I'm certainly not supportive of of doing away with uh, low-income assistance for for, for, for people who, who can't afford their fuel bills. So, I, I so will you ensure that, that yeah. I was going to say, will you like lead the effort and ensure that that's going to happen, that those programs stay? Well, I, I'll, be, I'll be working with the committee chairs that are reviewing those programs. I've supported them, uh, have historically supported them, and I look forward to supporting them uh, when, when this bill goes through committee and in, into the House floor. I, I, I've made a pledge to do that. Thank you. Uh, Ronnie in Verona, it's Congressman Rodney Freelinghuisen. Uh, thanks for joining my telephone town hall meeting. Congressman, hello. I'm calling from Verona. Thank you for your support of the endowment of uh, for the arts and for the humanities. Will you be in your position? Will you be doing the same to protect the Environmental Protection Agency? Well, you know, I've you know, New Jersey, as you're aware most densely populated state of the nation. I, I, I've been very much involved with, you know, protecting open space, clean water, clean air. We One of the areas we have a big focus on are a lot of our toxic waste and Superfund sites. Exactly. I, I think the cuts, I think that there are some, there are some EPA rules and regulations that are making it difficult for a, a lot of large and small businesses to be successful. I do think there is a view They've expanded a lot of their their their, uh, their jurisdiction, but I but I think essentially I think the the Environmental Protection Agency is a is an absolute necessary federal agency, and and I think some of the some of the large cuts uh, I I don't I don't think will be sustained by uh, uh, the, the majority in the House uh, as both Republicans and Democrats uh, vote on the bill. But, but th- thank you for, thank you for so. calling in. Thank you. Uh, Candace in Rockaway, it's Congressman Rodney Freelinghuisen. You've joined my telephone town hall meeting. Hi Hello, there, this is Candy. Yes, Candy. Candy from Rockaway. Welcome. Thank, thanks for getting on the line. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, my my concern is with the, um, the health care, uh, the, the bill that's going to be voted on on Thursday. I know you said that um, there are some more tweaks, but I am very concerned because I'm fortunate enough to have Medicare and to have supplemental uh, Mm -hmm. insurance, but I know a lot of people aren't. And I have done some research and read that about 20,000 people in our congressional district are going to lose their health care with this plan. So I'm urging you to vote against it. I, okay, let, let, let me let me comment. If you're on Medicare, I, I, there's been no plans to affect I'm Medicare. Not worried, I'm not worried. It, no, it, I'm not it, worried about yeah. that. What I'm saying is I'm fortunate. But what about the 20,000 other people well, in the 11th? Well, let, 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 let me. I think you're referring. There there have been some uh, there have been some recommendations that uh, that we we cover less Medicaid recipients. I, I have been working with other members of the New Jersey congressional delegation. Because we have, by and large, an older population in many states, we often ha- often have in New Jersey a lot more people with different types of disabilities. To make sure that the final package that will be voted on probably Thursday night uh, look- looks after people on Medicaid. There's a part of the bill that was originally drafted was sort of leave, leave, that. leaving leaving a lot of people offering? in a very desperate situation. So I, I can That's assure right. you, we're we're trying to make sure. The, the people that are receiving Medicaid, uh, the, those who are older and those with uh, different types of built disabilities, than in a state like New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, where we have a lot of people that are dependent on Medicaid, that, that we we make sure that their needs are met, and that that's one wow. of the things I'm wow. I, I'm looking forward I'm looking to see uh, what we call a, a manager's amendment that makes sure that s- some of the initial suggestions would have left, I think, New Jersey, older people and people with disabilities in a very bad way. I'm trying to work on uh, some changes to the bill, which will uh, do much better for, for Medicaid, just because New Jersey has so many people on Medicaid. 
So I, I think we're headed well, in the right direction, but I'm not sure in the final analysis uh, what the know, bill I will be, but I'll be fighting for, for more Medicaid coverage. Well, one other thing that I'd like to say <laughs> yeah. is, you know, the United States is the only industrialized nation in the world that does not provide health care for all of, its, all of its citizens. And I believe that health care is a human right, not access to that people can't afford it because the, they get $4,000 in tax credit and the insurance costs $11,000. Everyone yeah. should have health care. And I want to make sure that you understand how much concern there is for, for that within your district. And, and oh, I, 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 sh- I, I share that concern. I share that concern. And, uh, and I know there's a, there, some of the tax, initial tax credit proposals we're lower. I'm working with other members of the New Jersey congressional delegation to, to, to raise those numbers considerably. We, we don't want to be leaving people behind by by acting in uh, in haste. But th- thanks for getting on the line, uh, uh, Nan in uh, Livingston. Uh, Noah in Livingston. Hey, uh, how you, you doing? Joined my telephone town hall meeting. Thank you. Uh, just wondering, as the the head of the Appropriations Committee, and with our country twenty trillion dollars in debt, and half of the uh, people in the country or the uh, working people not paying anything into the income tax, how, how do you see using your position as the head of the committee um, to streamline spending to get rid of um, some of the programs? or expenditures that have been going on for years, if not decades. Um, we, we, we've, we've, actually, we've been actually been doing it over the last 10 years. If you take a look at some of our bills on energy and water, uh, some of our is- issues relative to uh, uh, things that have to do with the, the Justice Department, we've taken a look in the Environmental Protection Agency. We, we've actually reduced what we call discretionary spending considerably. Uh, on on all the appropriations bills, and that that in some cases, some of those uh, discretionary reductions have gone back to 2007 or 2008 levels. I know that's true with both the Energy Department and the Army Corps of Engineers. As important as their work is, we've we've made some cutbacks in in some areas of the environmental protection, the Department of Commerce. We've taken a look. Quite honestly, at some of our foreign aid programs to make sure that the countries that, that we give it to are, are worthy recipients, that the money's well spent. It's not going to the governments, but rather goes to nonprofits. So I think we've been doing our part. What, what, what is out of control is somewhat related to the earlier question is, is the whole issue of entitlements. And, and my view is that we need to make sure that if the, the people who have actually paid in to those entitlements that, that they that they get something back which is commensurate with what they uh, have put in and, and that that we don't get any free riders that in some cases have come to our country and and can qualify after six months for SSI uh, Social Security uh, income w- w- without having paid into it so we're taking a very close look at, at making reductions that we have done that in many ways across the board over the last couple of years uh, Tony in, in Nutley, it's Congressman Rodney Freelinghausen. You've joined my telephone town hall meeting. Hi. How you doing? How I are got you a doing? small bit. <clears throat> Good. I have a small business, and I'll be truthful with you. The environmental company, they're running a lot of my places out of uh, Jersey, and uh, you know, I'm I'm getting ready to pack my business in because where are you located, Nutley or where? No, Nutley. Yeah, but I work right all over the, the I work all over the state. Are you are you are you right on the main street, or do you work out of your uh, house, or? Well, the main office is in my house, but uh... okay. So th- this is uh, the DEP or New Jersey or the D- state or the federal EPA. EPA and DEP. Both you're you're, you're, pay, you're pi- paying a lot of fees for a variety of. Of things that well, you're not, doing for not a for lot business. of not a lot of fees, but uh, the jurisdictions that they they have are so so astronomical that a lot of the companies that I worked for just packed mm-hmm. it in and left the land to the cities, which really? isn't right neither. You know, because yeah. the city the city and the taxpayers getting stuck with the cleanups. Yeah, 
A few of them well, were the, super, the, super the, fun the, sites that we were yeah, working the, on. The super fun sites yeah. in New Jersey, we have more than, I have, I think, more in my congressional district than any other. 70% of them, mm-hmm. just you should know, are mm-hmm. we, we hold responsible parties uh, responsible yeah. for paying for the cleanup. It's the 30% of businesses that have sort of disappeared and have no, you know, we can't track them. Yeah. But, but we, yeah. we want to make sure that whether it's, federal dollars that we put in or whether it's private dollars for people who made the mistakes of pollution that, that all the money spent well. But for a small business, it's been pretty rough for you. A lot of them, you know, if you worked with them when they were, you know, when it first came through, because I've been in it since the 70s when the EPA first started. And all the gas companies, they sold all their service stations out because they got sick and tired of the EPA. Well, m- many yeah. many and, of those gas stations... Is, is, and I lost, you know, I lost a lot of business through that. Yeah. yeah. Had, you know. had you been working with them on cleanups or what? Well, I've been working on them with cleanups. You know, the companies were doing the thing and, and they, they just kept on every year. I mean, I, I've done stations four and five times yeah. in five years. You know, okay. There's no company that can eat that kind of money. No, and that's it's a big I mean, change. You, you should you should look into the EPA and yep. you know kind of straighten it out because well, there there I'm are going to be some there are going to be some major okay. reductions. To the Environmental Protection Agency we want to do it in a way that uh, doesn't obviously affect affect uh, okay. clean water and clean air. But th- thanks for getting on right. the line. Uh, just just as a reminder, this is Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen, and you've joined my telephone town hall meeting. If you'd like to make a comment or ask a question, please press the zero key on your telephone keypad at any time. Rosemary in Woodland Park, thanks for your patience. Uh, good evening. Good I evening. I have a question. Uh, President Trump has made unsubstantiated claims against President Obama concerning the wiretapping and surveillance. And I wonder how Congress is going to keep him accountable for the seri- serious misconduct. I mean, he's not above the law, and I think these tweets are out of control, and he should be well, held accountable I, I, for his behavior. I, I, I agree with you. The tweets are totally out of control. I, the House Intelligence Committee had a uh, public right. hearing today, which I think may be still be going on. And, 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 and I'm not. Still said, I, they're still I, stating I, that there's no evidence. Yeah, I, I, I am. Be held accountable I am a, for this. Yeah, I'm. A, yeah, I'm of the conduct. Yeah, I'm I'm of the school too that I, I've I've heard of no evidence, public or private, that would that would back up his notion that right. uh, the, the previous administration would be tapping his, you know, his apartment or his building in New now, York. Now, what would Congress I, I, do to make? Well, I, you know, I I I, I, I think I think I think that the, the testimony of the director of the FBI, Mr. Comey, is pretty well dismissed. That I I, I think obviously the president's put his a lot of credibility into his position, which I think is a, is an incorrect one. So I think to some extent he's, he's damaged himself. But I don't see any evidence. I haven't heard of any evidence that uh, that there's right. been any so chapping at state all. What steps will Congress take? Uh, I, I don't know what steps Congress will take. Him accountable but, cer- for but, cer- but certainly if, uh, if the evidence is collected from the FBI that repudiates what he said, uh, then Congress will examine what that evidence is. Thanks very much. Uh, Robert in Cedar Grove, it's Congressman Rodney Freelinghuisen. You've joined my telephone. Hi, Congressman. Hey. Hi. I'm, I'm very concerned with uh, the Republican Party just uh, towing the line of the party when it comes to the environment and, uh, uh, you know, being opposed to uh, – uh, Greenhouse gases and uh, regulations. It's unfortunate that these regulations have to be in place to keep f- people from doing unlawful things and, and destroying our environment. But uh, it's very concerning that, uh, you know, people's support of coal jobs coming back and, and uh, the dirtiest fuel one of the dirtiest fuels in, in, in the world, and uh, just the, the building up of our military while basically, you, you know, dismissing and ignoring uh, the, the research and the smartest scientists in the world and what they have to say about 
uh, well, that, global that, warming. And that, that, let me reassure you, I, I do believe in climate change. I do believe in climate change. Something's happened. I, I think the things that, that have happened uh, in the, around the world and in, in, in these United States is pretty clear that something has happened. Uh, and and, and let, let me say, I, I, I do I, I do feel that obviously we are too reliant on on fossil fuels. But I may say that there are ways, and I'm not an expert, but we've invested in a lot of different things. We've invested in wind power. We've invested in clean coal technology. We've invested in a, a new generation of nuclear power plants. Uh, we've invested in, in a variety of tax credits, which I think New Jersey probably I think has the second highest use of tax credits for solar ed- energy. So the, the president can propose some changes and I do think in some areas there's been over-regulation, basically putting a lot of small businesses. But I, I do think we, we need to have a balance. And uh, on the House Appropriations Committee, we work very closely with the EPA and the Department of Energy to make sure we have a broad spectrum of, uh, of uh, energy choices. I, I think that's – we don't want to become too dependent on natural gas. We don't want to become too much on fossil fuel, but certainly New Jersey – is leading the way, and I've been supportive of that. Uh, Adam in in Mount Tabor, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. Thanks for getting on the line. Uh, Thank you, Congressman. Um, I uh, was listening in earlier um, to the woman who was concerned about uh, Medicaid cuts, uh, and you said that you're working on on ways uh, to make those levels a lot better in the proposed bill. Now, to say that uh, you're going to make them better, it implies to me that they're not going to get back up to the levels they already are under the current system and under the ACA. So if, and you know, the president has promised that uh, whatever the ACA was placed with would be in his words, better than the ACA. Um, I'm happy with my own ACA uh, program and uh, my dad who's 92 depends on Medicaid funds as do various friends of mine who are essentially working poor do very socially uh, uh, essential jobs like being teachers, uh, but yeah. don't earn enough, uh, you know, uh, so that they qualify for the Medicaid expansion. So what, what, why what I, why what, would we replace I, what, the ACA, which is doing better, with something that you're promising will be doing if you fix it a little less worse than the ACA? Well, we're we're gonna we're, we're certainly gonna maintain protections for pre-existing conditions. We're still gonna uh, maintain a ban on lifetime caps. We, we still, uh, everybody seems to like allowing young people to stay on their parents' insurance. Uh, we're talking about, in this bill, I think, portability. But you, you focused on Medicaid. I think, as you know, it, it is a safety net, and, and particularly a big safety net for New Jerseyans with low income. I think it covers like 70 million people. I, I want to make sure that the final package, and it's still still being worked on, uh, still, uh, we, we take advantage as New Jersey, one of 31 states that's under the ACA that's expanded uh, Medicaid uh, coverage. I, I want to make sure that we keep that coverage as long as we as we can. There is some talk, quite honestly, of, of, of maybe block granting some of this to states and some of the governors, I'm not sure where our governor is, have talked about more flexibility to meet the the, the needs of the Medicaid population, but you know, I, I, I want to make sure that you know Medicaid is 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 fiscally sustainable, and and, and that's what I'm trying to do to make sure we we see in in, in the last uh, in the last uh, bill uh, as it comes to the floor Thursday night. Uh, Carl and Wayne, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You've joined my telephone town hall meeting. Uh, hi, Congressman. Thank you. Um, I have a multi-part question um, uh, because, uh, and I want to revisit some of the some of the questions that were already asked. I wanted to revisit the answers um, because I, I think so many of of uh, my fellow constituents share the same concerns. And also, I only heard part of your last answer, so I, I had a question on that as well. Um, uh, one part is on budget priorities. So um, I, I appreciate that um, you want to support many of the things that New Jerseyans are um, concerned about, but I, I wanted to get a better understanding of how you're prioritizing because the president has proposed 
a 9 or 10 percent increase in defense, which is something we haven't seen since the first term of Ronald Reagan. And, and Reagan was following a, a president that cut military spending. Um, military spending has only gone up over the last decade um, and, you know, is dwarfs the spending of the next seven nations um, combined. In the meantime, we have to balance programs like that are critical, critically important to New Jersey, like has been mentioned. People have mentioned the environment and the EPA. People have mentioned well, I, global I, warming. I, I think I think we need to do both. I mean, we we have uh, well, we have, well, we well have how, how do we, we do we, both? And and well, by I, the I, way, we, nobody, we do it carefully. If I can if I can finish, please, Congressman. Yeah. Nobody's yeah. mentioned the National Institute of Health, and of course, improving the health. The, the science behind health is is also vitally important. I, I, I support the National Institutes of Health. I visit there every year with a variety of constituent groups. I do not support what is it the twenty twenty five percent cut on the on the the, the twenty nine National Institutes of Health. I mean, the, the the president can propose, but I think you'll find bipartisan support not, not only for the National Institutes of Health, but but also for the Centers for De- Disease Control. These are these so, are good investments. They're they're sound investments. But they also we also need to invest in a military. You, you look at what Russia is doing around the world, what it's done in Syria, what it's done in Ukraine, what the Chinese are doing to deny uh, our ability to to to, to main tra- main, maintain uh, commerce in the South China Sea and across the Pacific. We need to do a balanced a balanced job of looking after our military everybody who serves, as well as our domestic agenda. And certainly, uh, I think I've been strongly supportive of our R&D in, in, in science and, and R&D that we see at the National Institutes of Health. Uh, Sarah in, in Livingston, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You've joined my telephone town hall meeting. Hi there. This is Sarah Simon speaking. Senator Freelingheisen, I would like to talk to you and thank you very much. Many years ago, about 18 years ago, I wrote to you and I said the health, the health department, the health, the health, the health, the health, what? Health department or? Yeah, the health department refused to send medication to my grandson that if he did not get the medication, he would die. And I wrote to your secretary on a Sunday morning and told her the situation. And within two days, I had medication for the young man that now that it's singing and dancing and is a beautiful young man. I want to thank you and thank you again for all you've done for us. I, I want to give a shout out, obviously, use this opportunity to give a shout out to my staff here in Washington as well as Morristown. I mean, the focus is on constituent service. They've been doing a good a good job up there in Morristown for for over 20 years, and the constituent services is the bottom line. These other issues are critical, but meeting the needs of, of uh, people on an everyday basis, uh, they do a superior job, and they make me look good. Thank you very much. Catherine Livingston, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You've joined oh, my telephone town hall meeting. Thank you. Congressman, thank you for taking my call. I have to put you on the phone with my son, Mark, who is a patient of NIH. I also have concerns about people over 50 in New Jersey losing employment that might have worked in the corporate world and getting close to 60 and not being able to find employment because of companies moving out of the state, as well as I think that sometimes New Jersey is the forgotten state when we listen to government across the nation and other states represent it because we are so small. But sometimes I feel like the people that represent us forget how expensive it is to live in the state. And we're yeah. middle class people trying to educate our children and living in one home. And I feel we're trying to do everything that we can do. But yet I sometimes feel that we are the forgotten citizens of this country. Mm-hmm. You want to put your uh, uh, Mark? How are you? Yep. Yes, sir. Good. How are you? Have, have, have you been doing? Uh, have you had some interaction with the, one of the institutes in Bethesda? Yep, I went there since I was about five years old, and what concerned me was is that when Mick Mulvaney was talking, he basically tried to time it up as this was cutting the budgets. So they can eliminate some of the buildings there. And That's ridiculous. Yeah. For maybe two to three buildings, and yeah. they're not empty buildings. What's going on there is biomedical research, there's cancer research, there's all these big name disease research, and when these are cut, 
these programs are going to go away. Yeah. I and mean, we it's federally funded, as obviously you know. You 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 should know that I I, I work pretty closely with uh, with Francis Collins, who's the is who runs the National Institutes of Health. I work pretty closely with right. Anthony Fauci, who did a lot of work in terms of, and and I visit there every year. I'm probably one of the few members of Congress that actually brings constituent groups. I brought a group of, of women, that, uh, uh, the, the, a few survivors of ovarian cancer down there. A couple of years ago, I brought a group of those uh, young people and, uh, that, have, that have survived cystic fibrosis, uh, 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 heart disease. So I, right. I, I think that Mulvaney, quite honestly, and he's not one of my favorite people. I never worked with him when he was in Congress. Right. Uh, he, he has no idea. Of the right. fact that that's the kind of gist I got was because if you look at and yeah. obviously you were one of the ones like these like you don't go there if you can go to your local hospital you go there like they yeah. fly people in from Africa from Asia they fly people from everywhere so they they they, 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 they they they've looked after you and and they're they're right. they're I have referred you know, often pediatric patients to to them so right. sometimes they they can't do anything but sometimes yeah, I, mean, they, I was yeah, five and I'm yeah. 25 now my brother and yeah. I. I was born, I wasn't diagnosed because it wasn't tested for it. So my brother yeah. crashed. NIH was the one that diagnosed us both and had us on a regimen. And we yeah. both grew to be healthy because of them. So it kind of just yeah. concerns me when he just talks in those generalities. Quite honestly, I reject a lot of what he said about the NIH. No, I, I know the things they do for ALS, uh, Parkinson's, a uh, variety of cancers. Right. I mean, they, they do remarkable. And, the, and their researchers... They they touch I think twelve thousand different medical centers and universities around the country. So it, the money, right. money just doesn't stay down in, in Bethesda. Right. And so kind of seemed, right. I mean, do you? And again, I'm not. I'm sure you can give me a spot on answer. But do you think that that's going to be revisited in Congress to where people aren't? I do. Go, I do. I do. The, 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 what it is to where yeah, they're going to fight for it? Yeah. The, 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 the chairman. The chairman of the of of that subcommittee is uh, Congressman Tom Cole of of Oklahoma. Right. He has a very very good working relationship with uh, uh, w with his counterpart uh, Rosa DeLauro, who comes from Connecticut, and uh, I, I think there's strong bipartisan support. The, the president can propose whatever he wants, but I, I can assure you we will work to defend and support the National Institutes of Health. I we, I've not run into any instances of of, of, of mis expenditures. But I, right. I, I appreciate, I appreciate you getting on the line and, and do reach out to me. I, I want to hear a little more about your story. So yeah, I can yeah, how, how would I go about doing that? Well, if you call my office at uh, 973. Uh, Sorry, you give me one second. I'm writing it down now. Okay. 973. Okay. 984-0711. And, and I will we'll, we'll ask anything I can do to get involved. I yeah. mean, I'm not trying to be a hero, but I mean, yeah, I'd like to hear your story. Everybody's their conscience, but this is what kind of, all right, let me try to speak out a little bit to see the good that it does. With no, the I know the, I, I think a lot of people are aware, are unaware of, of, of the investment that actually right. has been, I think at one point we doubled the NIH budget. And I think that's right. something that Tom Cole would like to do on our subcommittee. But obviously the White House has pushed back, but I, and quite honestly, some of their stuff is based, quite honestly, on anecdote and uh, misinformation. But right, thank and you. Dr. Mark is doing it. But, yeah, I will absolutely reach out and anything okay. I can do. And I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Okay. And I thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Jim and Nutley, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You've joined my telephone town hall meeting. Thank you, Congressman, for taking my call. I, uh, my, my question revolves around the uh, veterans uh, and, and uh, how they are serviced. Uh, yeah. I'm glad you're supporting the military. I, I think the you know, number one uh, thing for federal government is to protect our protect us. But and those who have served, those who have served, um, mm -hmm. recent has recent experience and with it, my, my daughter actually, and uh, it, it seems if when talking to the people, the, the computer systems are so antiquated, they don't talk to each other, and it, it, it just delays processing of benefits, of claims. disability benefits or claims, yeah. and, and, and it's somewhat of a nightmare to negotiate around that system. Well, and, let, let, uh, let, let, let me say, if, you're, if your daughter is specific, did, did she serve? Yes, yes. Well, she, I want to. In fact, she currently serves also. 
I want to, I want to, I want I, I want to thank her for her service. We, we would never be able to do what we did without the regular military and our guard and reserves. I, I work pretty closely with uh, uh, East Orange, that medical center, and I work pretty closely with the, the one in Basking Ridge, the Lions VA. But what, one thing that's common of our, of our uh, throughout the VA is that they're d- dealing, as you said, with antiquated uh, IT equipment. They have computers. Yes. That could not talk to one another. Right. When, They're when they dot get, systems, I've been told, which is really. Well, yeah, they, they, if you'll pardon the expression, the, the VA needs a good kick in the ass. Mm-hmm. And we've got a new guy who used to head up Morristown Memorial Hospital or Morristown Hospital, David Shulkin, who I recommended. He worked under the guy who was rather lackadaisical and lacked a lot of knowledge. He's running the system, he's trying to work on the whole issue of, of claims. In, in some cases, the two-year backlog, and, mm-hmm. and yes. uh, but I, I feel pretty positive about his leadership. And also, the other issue is the issue of electronic medical records. The, yes. the VA is years behind the right. Department of Defense. I, I'm sure your daughter probably, hopefully, doesn't carry her medical files around with her. But uh-huh. the, the, the the object is to put everything online, protect it, encrypt it, mm-hmm. and make sure that. If she's entitled when she retires, that uh, the, the, the VA will be there for her. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Amy in Montclair, it's uh, Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You, you've joined um, my hi, telephone town hall meeting. Hi there. Um, I have more of a comment than a question. Um, you say that you want Trump to release his tax returns, and yeah. yet you vote otherwise. You have to remember that you represent the constituents of the 11th District of Montclair, not the Congressional Republicans, not Paul Ryan, not the president. Mm-hmm. We elected you, and you're not representing our interests by voting the way you did. And we will remember this come November 6, 2018. All right. fair, fair, Thank you. Fair, fair enough. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, Lynn and Paquanic, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. Yes, hello. Thanks for getting on thank the line. You, Congressman. Ah, well, thank you for holding this uh, telephone town hall. My question is that during the campaign, candidate Trump promised to protect us from radical Islamic terrorists. Mm-hmm. But personally, I'm not aware of any radical Islamic terrorists coming into the U.S. from the Mexican border. Mm-hmm. So why is the Trump administration eliminating airport security programs to divert money to building a wall? Yeah, well, I I have some feelings about the wall, and uh, let me say, I I do think we need more agents in a variety of places to vet and check people, whether they come through uh, LaGuardia, Kennedy, or Newark, or whether they come from the the southern border. And and may may I say on on his border plan, I mean, that's one of the things that, that Congress will be discussing. There is a huge division of opinion. But first of all, we have to have a plan. We need to know how he's going to spend the money. And, and quite honestly, we're not going to give the green light to, to building the wall until he specifically tells you tells us what his plans are. Part, part of his plans is to hire more people, to vet people that, that are crossing the southern border. But I, I'm not sure the wall is the answer. But I can make, we're going to make sure that he has a plan you know, before he proceeds. proceeds. Uh, Barbara in uh, Bloomfield, thanks for your patience. It's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. Congressman, I'm calling in reference to the Meals on Wheel, the cut. Yeah. And what, can you tell me what they're going to do or what's going to happen? Well, uh, I, I, many for many years ago, I was a Morris County freeholder. I served in the legislature. I have always supported Meals on Wheels, not only at various locales uh, where where there are uh, nutrition sites, but also home delivered meal programs. So the, the, there is some speculation, perhaps with you know some some substance, that if the Department of Health and Human Services budget is reduced, that that uh, that the administration would target. A very popular program that's supported by Republicans and Democrats, known by Meals on Wheels. Th- th- those those Meals on Wheels are, I always view it as not only a lifeline for food, but a, a lifeline for lifeline. communication. 
So I, I don't think I don't think that proposal will have any traction in Congress. I think you'll find most Republicans and Democrats speaking against it. it it's one of those things similar to his targeting the uh, what they call low li- li- uh, heap, which is the low in uh, low income assistance uh, assistance for people on low income with energy bills. But Meals on Wheels, like the Head Start program, does some incredible things to keep people independent and, and maybe less dependent on their children. And, and I've always strongly supported it. Uh, Barbara in Bloomfield, it's Congressman Rodney Freelingheisen. You joined my telephone town hall meeting. Hello, Barbara. Hello. 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 Yeah. I don't know what happened to the uh, phone line here. I'm told it's frozen. Uh, it looks like, uh, let me say, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. Oh, Barbara and Bloomfield, are you there? Barbara and Bloomfield. Thank you. I'm waiting to talk to you. Yeah, I apologize. Um, Thursday night. I don't know what happened there. No, no problem. No problem. Yep. Technology. I understand it. Yep. Uh, let me just say and add on to the woman before me. I hope the program after school program for the children to stay at school is not cut because that's also exceedingly important. And it's only an $18 billion program. So I hope that that is not cut also. Well, they, they, uh, I think after, after school programs, obviously uh, parents, single parents and parents, uh, they need them need desperately. That program. Yeah. Absolutely. What I'm concerned about is this Thursday night, it's supposed to be the vote on the health care bill. Mm-hmm. And I am really questioning, one, the vote, um, how are you going to vote on it? And I'm very upset with 14 million people are going to be losing their health care coverage. What do they do? What well, happens? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I've heard those figures somewhat. They were substantiated by the Congressional Budget CBU. Office. Yeah, the, 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 the issue, I, I understand that uh, the speaker is looking to make sure that, that people do not lose their coverage. They're going to try to make sure... This, How? Uh, well, How? We're, we're, you know, we're, we're, one of the things we're trying to do is to make sure that those that are between 50 and 64, that there, there are, that there's more money. Uh, I think someone said 90 billion dollars more in the way of spending to cover that, that, that uh, a- area where, in fact, they, they may be losing health incurred. So it's, it's a work in project, uh, uh, progress. a work in progress, and, and, and I'm taking a look. To make sure that the, the the bill does not hurt New Jerseyans and people in the Northeast, where it's more expensive for people to survive, and where we have a greater number of people who are dependent on on, on Medicaid. Uh, it looks like we have time for uh, one more question. After that, those remaining on the line will be transferred into voicemail, where you can ask questions or leave comments. I listen to each, mes- each message, but these telephone town hall meetings. I've had such a great participation that I regularly receive dozens upon dozens of comments. Please know that your opinion is valuable to me. Now, just a reminder, if you'd like to receive my weekly e-newsletter, you can visit my website at freelingheisen.house.gov. One last question from Marty in Verona. Thanks for getting on the line. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Good, thanks. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one is more general about the uh, – uh, the uh, Social Security, because I'm near yeah. the end of waited, pushed out to the end. And, uh, you know, it seems that uh, it's not my fault people are living longer and it's costing more money. I realize the whole deal. Yeah. But, uh, I'm a little concerned about the, the way things are. Uh, that's one. The other is uh, more specific about the uh, – we have a, a place we're going to retire to. It's on the shore, and we pay flood insurance. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a surcharge on flood insurance uh, on the insurance to oh, pay for the wall in Mexico, and uh, you know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't like that. Either. Yeah, no, I, I, I think for, for, first of all, uh, the National Flood Insurance Program uh, 
is pretty very important to New Jerseyans, New Yorkers, Connecticut, people along the Florida and Texas. Of course, that there's been, and I hope it's only loose talk. There's been some talk that the president would uh, would abolish the national flood insurance program, which has been very supportive of, of people, certainly across the state of New Jersey, after Hurricane Sandy and just about every major storm we've had, uh, uh, and 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 somehow shift those dollars to a towards the uh, the the border wall. We we want to keep the national flood flood insurance program. We want it to be fiscally sound, which is one reason that that some of the fees have been increased. But we're not going to let. I think the administration shift that into into a into some sort of fund to to build a a a a, a new wall along our southern border. These are two distinct issues. The, the, the wall. We need to have a plan. But floods are inevitable, and they've been catastrophic to New Jersey, and we need to make sure we keep that program going. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for participating in tonight's telephone town hall meeting. At this time, everyone will be transferred to voicemail, so so leave your concerns. And, and again, thank you, and good night. 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 Again,